what is going on dominators rico garcia here back again with another amazing episode today we're going to be joined by the one and only carlos machine who i lovingly call the claims machine and he's going to be sharing with us uh basically the state of the insurance industry as a whole particularly here in florida because i know again as a florida contractor i personally have heard of a lot of the horror stories that are happening right now with us as restoration contractors doing work and just taking forever to get paid and um again there's been a lot of changes that have happened uh, on a state level with insurance companies and not only how they're treating homeowners and the coverages that are kind of taken away uh slowly but surely but then also the public adjuster's ability to maneuver and what it really what we're really going to cover today is how to really align yourself with some of the best public adjusters in your general area when to bring them in and how to use them to the best of your ability for not only your success but your customer's success as well so without further ado let's jump into the show welcome to the restoration domination podcast where you learn actionable advice that moves the needle and helps service-based businesses dominate here's your host rico garcia jr all right carlos what's going on brother welcome to the show are you ready to help us dominate yes sir thanks for having me back Man, such little enthusiasm. Can, can we try that one more time? How much you want, Rico? <laughs> <laughs> How much do you want? Oh, no, man. On? Thank you. Thank you for having me back, dude. It's been a little bit, but uh, yeah, it's uh, it's fun to be back. It is. It is, man. It's, it's, I'm glad to uh, have you back on the show. And for those listening for the first time that are just you know hearing uh, the names Carlos Machine, the Claims Machine, uh, and they probably realize how friendly we sound. It's because we genuinely are friendly. Like you know, he's in the Boca area. Uh, I'm in Florida as well. Uh, I've worked on uh, several, several projects with Carlos, um, uh, with my clients, uh, helping us with claims. And I got to say, he's been uh, an absolute godsend every time that we've used him on any one of our claims. So uh, Carlos, for those that may not be familiar with the name, may not be familiar with the organization, fill in some of the gaps on my intro and just, you know, let everybody know exactly who you are and what it is that you do. Yeah, my, my name is Carlos Maching. I'm the owner and founder of Policyholder Advocates, or also known as GetYourClaimPaid.com. Uh, I've been in the insurance industry going on 16 years now and um, a public adjuster since 2018. And uh, we just help homeowners make sure that they get their claim paid from the insurance company, fight tooth and nail to get every coverage that they're uh, entitled to on their homeowner's claim or their commercial uh, business claim as well. Uh, and uh, we're based out of South Florida and handle claims pr pretty much throughout the whole state. That's awesome. So tooth and nail, let's pick up there because that's kind of what it feels like the fight is like in today's landscape. Uh, there's been a lot of changes, uh, you know, as far as legislation is concerned. Uh, you know, there's a lot more changes that are potentially coming. Um, what's the or let's start with just sentiment right um obviously you deal with a lot of restoration contractors uh general contractors as well they clear roofers they clearly have a sentiment because they're they're being affected a certain way as well um but then public adjusters as a general whole that's an entire segment that i feel is kind of there's a crusade actively against uh public adjusters um so let's start with not the specifics of what's changed but let's start with just the market sentiment from contractors and public adjusters about how things are feeling from your perspective and um we'll kind of take it from there i mean overall i think the the sentiment is is relatively the same that it's been um maybe the wedge is being pushed in a little bit more just because of the way the legislation changes and now we're we're fighting uh we're gonna be fighting a little bit harder moving forward um luckily the bulk of claims from like hurricane ian and things like that are not getting affected by the the newest legislation but um I'm I'm definitely seeing the forest for the trees. I think it's going to get a little bit, I don't want to say nastier, but a little bit more aggressive between the trades be just because, you know, we're fighting. These policies are harder to get the coverage open. The, just the carriers alone don't want to pay for anything. So you have contractors that are looking for work or they're maybe moving on to the next job because they haven't gotten paid, um, things like that. So I think that's going to bring, bring in some, some problems. So obviously, I mean, that's, that, that's the sentiment. What, what kind of feedback and what, what are you hearing from, from contractors? Because we all know that public adjusters, for the most part, I mean, right, you're, you, you sign a claim, you fight tooth and nail, you're, you're creating these scopes, you're, you're you know, 
submitting all your paperwork, you're really preparing a file um, to the best of your ability. And we know that it's a process to, to, to get paid. Like you're, you're kind of the last one in a perfect world. You're kind of like the, one of the first people in, but then you're also one of the last ones to ever get fed. Right. As yep. far as payment is concerned, um, restoration contractors, a little bit different, right? Um, generally speaking, they're getting paid a little bit early. They're in, they're out. Um, so what are you hearing on the streets as far as, you know, especially here in Florida, like what's happening with a lot of restoration contractors uh, with their invoices getting paid and, you know, the kind of pushback that they're getting now? Uh, what's, what's the word on that? I mean, it's unfortunate, Rico. Um, I'm hearing just as bad as for us to get paid that they're, they're not getting um, simple things like roofing tarp invoices that are still outstanding. And we're, we're approaching almost a year since Hurricane Ian. So, yep. you know, that's insane that we're even having this conversation. Mm -hmm. um they the homeowner needs to mitigate their damage the mitigation company's there to assist them with that they had a hurricane category five hurricane that hit this area and they're not even paying for the tarp right i mean that shouldn't even be a In question, question. Yeah. maybe pricing fine but you have a ca catastrophic event that could warrant you know the, the catastrophe hours or after hours charges and things like that and they're not even paying for the basics mm -hmm. so you know i know of several smaller companies unfortunately that they had to fold up, you yeah. know, they're, or they're waiting. They're not doing any other work because they've expended themselves. And now they're just waiting for hopefully one day. These, and majority of these things are going to litigation. Um, and, and I'm sorry, I hope they hear this, but legislators, everybody up North in Tallahassee, they can go shove it because they, they're creating this. They made this worse. They literally gave the keys to the kingdom to the insurance companies and emboldened them to do whatever the hell they want moving. Um, they, they're just, it's nothing like I've ever seen in, in the 16 years that I, I'm in this industry. Um, I work catastrophes for the carriers. That's my, that was my main purpose uh, when, I, when I started my, in, my, in this industry. And we did not ever, and I was, I was with one of the big firms, uh, big carriers. I should, we never got word that, hey, don't pay a claim. We got checkbooks and we went out to the, the site and paid claims instantly. They may not have been paid 100%. There was going to be supplements, but we knew that. We, but we wanted to get cash in the people's hands so work can be done. Right. And that's not the case now. Now it's mm -hmm. how the hell do we delay this enough that these people are just going to give up? And that's what they're doing. They're giving up. They're, they're getting whatever roofer on the side that they can get the job done for peanuts on the dollar because that's all they can afford. The roofs are not getting done properly. The mitigation is not getting done properly. The flood dry out is not – it is – it's an absolute disaster. And for anybody that can sit here – and boast, you know, close clean numbers and this and that. Uh, you know, I was looking at some of the, the the data from the state of Florida, and I was I was laughing and crying at the same time. One because it could have been us here on the East Coast just as easily as everybody on the West Coast, and they they came out saying that we're a bunch of locusts coming in to just suck everybody dry. And yet, there's nothing to suck up. They haven't paid right. clean. So yeah. what are we? What are we? What are you claiming that we're doing when you don't even want to pay it? So right. it's just it's the boy crying wolf, you know? So, um, it's bad, man. It's bad. I mean, I've got a good amount of claims and we're fighting them tooth and nail. Um, I've got claims where they're sending out engineers. I have the engineers agreeing with me on site that no other source of water could be other than from a hurricane blowing a tree through a roof, allowing the water to come in. And they're still telling me they're not paying for the claim because maybe flood water. I mean, it just, right. it blows me away. And yeah, we're not going to give you a copy of the report that we're denying the claim based on. Right. Since when is that legal? Since when mm -hmm. are they able to do this? They collect premiums. They should be paying out. And then unfortunately, you know, in the past, you would be able to go out. I mean, I know we did work back in Irma and things like that. Hey, go put up a tarp. You know you're getting paid on that tarp. Yeah. Maybe and not soon. the dry out. Maybe not the mold. Maybe you might, that might require a little bit more finesse. But that tarp, you're getting paid. And you get paid twice because yeah. you have to go redo it because of the amount of time. Yep. And we're not even getting paid once. You guys yeah. have material time. You have labor. You have, you know, all this stuff that, that that's costs that are involved in your mobilization. And you're getting stuck dry. Um, I also know of a lot of contractors such as window guys, uh, some roofers. If insurance is involved, they're not even taking on the job. They don't even want to deal with it. Because yep. why? They're going to come and give you an estimate. They're going to waste the time to meet with you, you know, smooth you, this, that, and the other, and they're not going to see this job for a year and a half. Mm -hmm. What's the point of doing that if we all know the pricing is going to change in a year and a half? Yep. Mm -hmm. So they're like, unless you're paying cash, I'm not seeing you. I can't right. get a window guy to come and give me an estimate out West. 
can't. So it's bad, man. I, I'm really, I'm concerned, not as a public adjuster, but more as a homeowner. You know, my, my rates are increasing on the East Coast. I didn't get hit by the hurricane. Right. Why, why should, you know, their efforts or, or lack thereof cost me more money? Um, it's been an old, old uh, argument for a while now, but it's, it's going to get to a point where no one's going to be able to afford insurance. And yeah, it's definitely what's going to happen creating a pinch in the market. There, there's no question about that. And w when you look at the general landscape, and again, I, I want to make this really clear. That's not to say that there's not, for us restoration contractors and for public adjusters, this is not to say that there is not, there, that there's no money to be made. Like no one's no. really saying that. Of but not. what we are saying, I think we could all agree, is that the time to get paid is seemingly just getting further and further and further out. And we're talking about people and organizations with real SOPs, with amazing reports. Everything is itemized the way that it's supposed to itemize. Everything is legitimately being spoon fed to the desk adjuster and the field adjuster and anybody else who goes out there. The timeline still progressively seem to get wider and wider and wider. So not only is this the, the is this a sad story uh, because it's really a blanket scenario that's happening that's affecting everybody. It's affecting the contractors and their ability to get paid. It's affecting the contractor and their ability to go ahead and um, you know support the the local community. I mean, hell, yeah. when you're thinking about water mitigation, mold remediation, all of these things, fire, smoke restoration, the reasons why most of these companies companies exist is so that they could really be of, you know, major, major assistance to independent homeowners and entire communities, especially once we have a catastrophe like this. Um, but then also the homeowner is suffering, not from the standpoint of them having to deal with their repairs not being done and not having the money, but then at the same time, premiums are going up. At and the very same time. At the very at same the time. very same time. And you're it's this weird place it's like this twilight zone that we're in it's like well wait you guys can't even wait to raise my ra my rates until like stuff gets fixed and i'm paid what i'm owed it's like what's going on here no, they're, they're and, looking for a prepayment of their payment to you <laughs> basically yeah <laughs> yeah, it's yeah, just yeah. Blow, mind blowing yeah so you know the, we know that there's still money to be made and what i want to talk about now is knowing the landscape and understanding what it is that we're up against. What are public adjusters doing, number one, to, to facilitate this, to, to, to pave the way for smoother sailing, if you will, right? Just make it a little bit easier of a process. And what tips and or tricks do you have for the restoration contractors on bringing in public adjusters if they are working with public adjusters or how they can better structure, if at all, what they currently have going on? But before you answer that, let's just take a quick moment to thank our amazing sponsors. Hey, Dominators, real quick, I want to drop a name on you that I think can make all the difference in the world in your business. And that name is Jerry Edel. Who's Jerry? Jerry's a specialist when it comes down to referral revenue from insurance agents. He started way back in the day in the 70s as a restoration technician and 34 years later ended up as a national sales trainer for one of the largest restoration franchise companies in the U.S. And for the past 16 years, he's been helping restoration contractors to succeed at creating long-term referral revenue from insurance agents. And by success, Jerry expects a full-time sales professional in 12 months to have created at least 40 agency partners to commit to sending you at least five referrals a year. And Jerry's process, listen, it's unique. It's different from all of the traditional insurance agent sales strategies. And more importantly, Jerry can help you create a long-term referral revenue from insurance agents. So go ahead and schedule your free call today to see exactly how Jerry can help you. Make sure that you check out Jerry edel.com forward slash dominate again that's jerry edel.com forward slash dominate hey guys let me ask you a quick question do you want to get paid faster and collect more on your insurance invoices then listen look no further than one claim solutions ocs is an insurance billing specialist that works with adjuster on behalf of people just like us restoration contractors to accelerate our receivables cycle and more importantly increase our overall collections Contractors that work with one claim get their invoices paid on average in around 32 days. And in most cases, actually see an increase in the collections that more than offset the price of the service. So in a lot of ways, 
This makes OCS effectively free. And that's even before you start to count in the overhead savings that's tied to billing and all of the other administrative burdens that go along with that. So I tell you what, let One Claim Solutions deal with carriers so that you can spend more time on what matters most, which is running your business. Get your free consultation today. Head on over to oneclaimsolution.com forward slash dominate. Once again, that is oneclaimsolution.com forward slash dominate. Are you a restoration business owner thinking about selling your business? Or maybe you're just at that point where you're starting to consider some of your options. Either way, you need to know about our sponsor, Restoration Brokers of America. You see, RBA is a full service brokerage firm that specializes in helping restoration business owners sell their companies for their maximum value. And when you work with RBA, you're going to get a personalized approach that takes everything into consideration, looking at your unique circumstances as well as your goals. They're also going to help you identify the potential buyers. They're going to go ahead and negotiate the best terms, and they're going to make everything go as smooth as possible. Plus, they're also going to handle all of the paper work and the legal details so that you can focus on exactly what it is that you do best, which is running your business. So if you're thinking about selling your business, don't do it alone. Contact RBA today and let them help you get the best possible outcome. All you have to do is visit their website, sellmyrestorationbusiness.com. Again, that's sellmyrestorationbusiness.com and learn more. All right, we're back. So we left off um, knowing what we know today, right? What is, what are some of the tips that you can give to, you know, what are you doing independently and what public adjusters are doing in order to kind of facilitate the whole, um, you know, payment aspect of things? And then what, if anything, should restoration contractors consider um, in order to make it easier for them to get paid as well? Well, I mean, I'm going to take your last question and put it first. I think the biggest thing is line yourself up with a good public adjust, number one, um, or a good attorney as well. You know, either way, we're going to be a very crucial part of the claims process. I think now more than ever, um, I think there's more information about public adjusters existing because I'll be honest with you, you went over to the West Coast of Florida and half the people didn't know public adjusters existed. Yeah, there was like zero do. clue, very and, little awareness. And we're this is a couple hundred year old industry. This is not something that just came about that since Hurricane Wilma in 05. You know, we've been around as an industry for a long time. So um, that's number one. Number two, what I'm doing differently, I wouldn't even say I'm doing differently. One, it's that I've always been a firm believer you've got to be uh, somewhat cognizant of the trends or trying try to see the forest for the trees of how the changes are going to come down. We all really knew that this legislation was coming out at some point. It just got delayed once and delayed a second time and then finally hit us and everybody's like, oh my God, we can't do make money anymore. No, guys, we all knew about this. It, we were just a ticking time bomb and if you weren't preparing, then you're the ones that are going to be left behind, unfortunately. Um, that being said, I think it's trying to be able to evolve either one as the evolution occurs or evolve ahead of time. Be ready for these type of changes because if everybody is barking and hollering now, the next session is... I'm hearing other things that are coming down and I don't even want to talk about it because I don't want to put it in the ether to even be possible to come down. Um, right. If it does, I think it's, it's going to literally destroy every right of a citizen in the United States and in, in the uh, state of Florida that's going to own insurance. It's going to change everything. Um, to me, it'll, it'll change it to the point why even have it. That's the way I'm looking at it. I don't think it's going to happen, but needless to say, um, what I'm doing differently is I, I reviewed the legislation very thoroughly. I've gotten some, uh, some feedback from attorneys as well. The problem is, is that just like other legislation changes, we don't really know the effect of it until it starts getting implemented. Even though it was implemented back now in July, we're not really seeing these policies pop up and these claims pop up. Um, and we might not see them for another five, six months. I'm starting to see some of them. Um, but it's just, a, a, it's always been about timelines, right? We've always talked about this in a process and making sure that you get this in timely and, and whatnot. But a restoration contractor needs to be very, very aware of policy endorsements that are coming down. The biggest thing we've talked about, we've seen it, the water limit endorsement of the 10K, that's been around for some time. It's being more prevalent than ever. So you're going to see this on almost every policy. Mm -hmm. um, there's a big situation now that policies are coming up, which I still don't know how it got through, but the Department of Insurance and Regulation allowed a endorsement to come through and circumvented yep. pretty much Florida building code, okay? 
And it says that I don't care if you have a matching roof. I don't care if you have a matching kitchen. If it's not damaged from water or something that we cover, we're only going to give you 1% of your total policy coverage for that matching item. Mm -hmm. So if they have $500,000, they're only going to get five grand to match the rest of the roof. Well, building code says it's something different, first right. of all. That, again, some of this stuff, I don't even know how it's legal and how it even passes, but it does. So uh, the reason why I'm bringing that up is more for the water damage aspect, you know, as a restoration contractor that's trying to help a client you know, and, and try to mitigate. You don't also want to do too much mitigation. Right. One, that you're not going to get paid for. Or two, you put the, the client into a predicament that now you got their entire kitchen ripped out when you only knew that you were going to get paid for two cabinets. They could have been in somewhat of a situation to make repairs within what's the policy coverage and not put them in a real bad spot. Now, mind right. you, that doesn't happen every time and you guys are quality, you guys are doing yeah, the right thing. Granted. You don't have to worry about any of that. But these are le policy languages that are coming in that everybody needs to be aware of. Right. Um, the biggest thing, though, that we've talked in the past, too, you got to be very careful on how you talk about this with clientele that you're, you're signing up. Because as a contractor, you technically, by law, you can't talk about policy and coverage or review that with the client. There's only two individuals that are licensed to do so in the state of Florida, public adjusters and attorneys. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the guys I work with, uh, we've worked in the past, you know, hey, send me a copy of the policy. I'll take a look at it before you even step foot in there and get a drive back in there to pick up a drop of water. Let me take a quick look at it. I'm going to get to the spot that I need to find that information real fast. Right. Or I can decipher it. Now, not everybody has that ability, um, but you you definitely want to look at that because that's going to, I think, make or break you because, listen, you go and sign a, a water loss that is what you're looking at, 30, 40K, and they only have a $10,000 water limit. Well, you just spent a week in, in mitigation effort, yeah. right? Or you could have gotten signed three more and made up for that, that difference. Um, mm. so you could be potentially putting yourself out in a major expense and then clients not happy with you because they're not getting paid or you're trying to chase them for money. It just, that's what I'm saying before. I think the landscape's going to change drastically on how people view things and what kind of jobs that you want to get involved with. There's too much risk involved for contractors. Yep. So um, well, this is why I've been preaching for several years now about the importance of um, understanding how to market and how to position yourself as a restoration business owner yep. uh, to gain cash paying jobs, like direct to consumer cash paying jobs, right? Yep. And um, it's, it's funny because I'm having conversations now with several organizations and several business owners that are finally coming to the, to the realization that even even the program work like even the program work is starting to get dicier and dicier and it's you know there's more out. restrictions and and now out. they're yeah. finally at the point where they're like oh okay yeah maybe we should you know worry a little bit more about our marketing about our positioning about our branding and really start thinking about how business has always been thought of, right? It's just in, in the restoration arena, it hasn't really worked out that way because there was never a need. Maybe that's part of the equation. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Um, but most businesses have always had a very similar formula, right? Some kind of, of message, getting eyeballs on your message, whether that was back in the day with a, you know, newspaper ad or, uh, you know, yellow pages ad, it was always about getting as many eyeballs and then having some kind of call to action, even if it's not an immediate client, but just someone that you can nurture over the long term, yeah. because those are going to be the people that are going to, to have, you're going to have the relationship with them. You're not going to have to hunt them down. And more importantly, in today's landscape, I think that those that kind of marketing today is just so important. Um, the other aspect that I wanted to talk to you about this, just kind of taking the landscape into consideration here, is as a restoration contractor, you really have to be careful now about even the public adjusters that you're doing business with. And we were kind of talking a little bit about this off camera about, you know, oh, man, like considering the, the landscape, um, as a new public adjuster, is that even like a record? Like I wouldn't touch it with a 10 foot pole as a brand new public adjuster. Now you might have a different take on that, <laughs> but from a restoration contractor standpoint, unless you're doing business with a well-established public adjuster, who's already got a massive book of business that you know that they're going to be around for a while, new guys stepping into the arena, 
they're not going to survive very long. So, I mean, it's kind of a, you know, that, that same scenario that restoration contractors, even you public adjusters deal with all the time when you contact the desk adjuster and then they realize that, you know, they, they've been, you know, they were fired or they quit like a month and a half ago. Right. Yeah. Like that's not the ideal scenario that you would want with the public adjuster. So what's kind of your, what's your take on that new public adjusters entering the field now, what should they kind of be made aware of? Well, look, I mean, as a PA firm, we, we don't, other than in, during the big hurricane situations where we're getting an influx of calls, and we don't do a whole lot of advertising, to be honest. Mm. We do some networking events and things like that. So everything's word of mouth for us. So um, it's not like we're pumping leads to to our guys. They're they're bringing stuff to us as well. But in a big hurricane situation, we can only handle so much. So we spread it out and make sure our clients. Are, um, that So I wouldn't necessarily worry about a big client base um, because, I mean, let's be real. Most homeowners only have an insurance claim on their home once in their life. You know, South Florida, we're a little bit different. We're, you know, a different breed of animal because of all the storms that we have down here. But historically throughout the country, you only have one, maybe two. Whereas a car accidents, you have five or six in your lifetime, you know? Mm. So repeat customers are not as as frequent as people may think. Um, I I wouldn't stray away from getting into the public adjusting industry. Just know that it's not as easy as it used to. Um, mm. It's, it's going to be getting more difficult. I mean, here, disclaimer, we are hiring. So we're looking for adjusters um to spread out throughout the state but at the same point like don't think that this is a you know if you see a pa driving a, a nice fancy car don't you think that's going to happen to you next month mm -hmm. um it takes six months a year year and a half to really build that pipeline because i mean before it'd be three to six months we would get these claims paid i mean we have plenty of files you and i together 30 45 days we're, we're done i mean and that's that's beautiful um we recently re-implemented some things that you know, because of the new statutory limitations and whatnot, and we're already rocking a couple of claims that are going to be within that timeline again. So it's still not not feasible. Mm -hmm. um, however, it's difficult. It, it's a very difficult thing. Um, one of the things that I they, I know they've tossed around for a while, but they haven't been able to do it yet, is um, you know capping our fees to ten percent over across the board. Not you know, so right. that's going to make it more difficult to make money, but. Um, look, at the end of the day, for somebody like myself, I was always about quality claims, not quantity. So I'm nothing is really changing in, in my aspects. But um, make sure that you're lining yourself up with somebody that's got experience in it. You don't want to be, you know, whether you're a new PA, PA coming into the business or a restoration contractor trying to link up with a PA. Make sure they got five, six, seven years experience, man. And even then, um, test a couple claims out here and there, whatnot. You want to make sure that someone is well versed in policy and knows how to implement tactics to, to not I don't want to say exploit the policy, but ensure the policy is utilized the way it's meant. So without that, then I don't care if you have 100 claims or one claim. If it's if you don't have the execution, there's no point. Stay away. I love it, man. Yeah, just being really mindful of like who you're doing business with. Yeah. Again, especially when there's so many small little intricacies in the marketplace and small little changes, uh, you want to make sure. Just the reason why I mentioned is you simply want to make sure that the pre the person that you're doing business with, maybe you know, again, maybe they they prospected you and saying, hey, you know, I'm a PA, I'm new to the game, you know, I'm hungry and this and that, but that hunger could very easily wear out quickly while they're you know doing their claims and then just waiting to get paid, right? You just want to make sure that the person's going to be in business 12 months from now. And I'm not saying that there's not going to be some fresh blood that enters the marketplace and they're absolutely amazing. They understand uh, estimating, they understand the policy, they, and they really do want to build an, an amazing book of business. There's always going to be those individuals that enter any arena, but there's, we also know that there's going to be a lot of individuals that are just going to die off in the vine because they're, it's just a different landscape yep. today. Well, and, listen, uh, restoration, public adjusting, even attorneys, you know, yeah, the attorneys all, gotten, we, we all they get, get hit too. We all get burnt out, man. Like yeah. we're, we're human. And when you're at the rat race every single day and you're hitting a wall every single day and you're not seeing these things pan out and, and you're just, yeah, it's very easy to get burnt out and drop off and say, peace out. I'm done. I don't want to do this ever again. Um, and and maybe that's the good part of the legislation. You know, maybe that the, it weeds out some of those individuals that are really not doing a service clientele. However, legislation's not doing any service for the citizens of the state. So, you know, that's really where it comes down to. We elected these officials, you know, to have our best interests in heart and and they don't. They're not. They're they're just showing. And I don't care what side of the aisle. I'm not trying to be political by any means. But I think at the end of the day, they're all paid off. They're all insurance companies voted for these things. So they obviously are. 
Um, the one big tidbit that I drove me nuts recently when I saw this article, I think it was Chip Merlin that put it out, um, but about how the, the exiting of the last three or four insurance companies um, leaving Florida, one, unlike ever precedented before, they're pulling out of Florida, not going bankrupt, but they're allowed to leave their auto, but they're pulling their, their homeowner. Mm-hmm. Usually before it's, hey, you want to leave, take everything. Right. So that's kind of weird that that's going on. Secondly, nowhere in the evaluation and the audit that they did as they're exiting Florida, did it come up that legislation, I mean, litigation was a driving issue of their financial risk. Everything's mm-hmm. always been chirping about, oh, litigation, public adjusters, attorneys, they're causing all these things, water mitigation companies with faulty water claims. No, it's mixed management, it's all funds and expenses and taking too many big bonuses it's like come on yeah. man you know who's winning these big ceos that are going to do this again they're going to come back and open up another insurance company with the money that they stole from everything at the end of the day to me it's a big money laundering scheme that's allowed to be happening in the- um but you know it's maybe- definitely crazy man it's definitely crazy like what you know and anybody who's been in the business for a while like understands like how crazy it really is yeah. and uh, how frustrating it is, um, especially for, you know, public adjusters, especially for the homeowner, especially for the restoration contractors, because, you know, again, if you're on the other side and you're, you know, the carrier, they're like, eh, okay, well, you got the bankroll and you've got all the time in the world and, you know, you're, you're okay. You know, it's, yeah. it doesn't really affect you as much, but when you're trying to build a team and everything else, it just changes the way that you look at things. Now, obviously, nobody has a crystal ball. Right. Yeah. And we don't really know what's out on the horizon. But, you know, if you had to make some projections, man, what do you think is is next for the state of Florida as it pertains to homeowners and public adjusters and what that relationship is going to look like? Well, I mean, I'll be honest in the the rising, not just rise, rocketing of insurance is ridiculous. I mean, here in my house, we went up, I think, 20% consistently for the last three or four years. Never had a, haven't had an insurance claim since Irma. I got hit. Irma went right over my house. Um, so, you know, when you have that, no matter what, you know, whether this West Coast can't handle, we're all getting hit with these increased taxes are going through the roof. Um, you know, the cost of living is going through the roof, everything. So to make these repairs, everything is costing more. I, I, I'm, I'm fearful of a massive housing market crash. I mean, obviously nothing compared to what we're normally talking about. But I think this is going to be what perpetrates, uh, pepper, uh, uh, whatever, Mo- that one. <laughs> yeah, but that gets us closer to the ding housing market crash. And I think it's going to be worse than, than we've seen before because uh, no, no one could afford it. You know, rentals are not going to be affordable anymore. And um, I don't know what they're going to do. Uh, the only thing I am hopeful for, because I am a more optimistic person generally, is that um, these legislation changes are waking up people that thought this was helping them, um, whether it be legislators or homeowners, and it's going to wake them up. And, and if it's the homeowners and say, hey, we got to get rid of all of you, you know, whatever the case may be, and, and people in there to put actual change that's going to help. Um, is I think that's the number one thing that we're facing in the state of Florida right now. We, we're in an, a, a massive insurance crisis, and no one's doing anything about it. And until they do, I don't. It's not going to be good for anybody. I'll be honest. Between all the different endorsements of now, you know, the the regulated um, drop down payments of of roof payments now that you know as your roof gets older, they're only going to pay you X amount of percentage. Um, the matching stuff. It just what are you paying for? I mean, unless lightning strikes your house or a, a airplane crashes on you. Right. You're not covered or you're minimally covered, you know, so right. that's it's not good, man. Um, but again, I'm hopeful that maybe it's kind of like the, the fire that wakes people up to, to say, hey, enough's enough. We got to make some changes here and, and we got to revert back to where the things were, because at least where we're getting. Now, the flip side and possibly the more optimistic side to the argument is there is this possibility moving forward that homeowners now awaken to the fact that having a public adjuster on their side is more important now than it ever has been before. What's your take? Absolutely. A hundred percent. Again, like I said earlier, I think it's awakening people to knowing that we exist. You know, the state has, they did a really good job of making us look like the devil. Mm-hmm. Um, when, when Ian hit, I, I was in utter shock when Jimmy Petronas and DeSantis were going to talk in the way they talked about us. Um, I was one of the many that came over from the East Coast with supplies ready. I wasn't signing in. I didn't sign claims for the first week and a half. Mm-hmm. I was out there every day bringing over supplies, whether it be water, gasoline, whatever I could do, tarps. I didn't collect a penny. I was just there to help my fellow citizens because I would hope they would do that for us if we got whacked by that kind of a right. um, you know, And then to see the, the, 
the just blatantly ridiculous handling of claims. I get it. There was a lot of claims and they couldn't be seen immediately. But once they did get seen, it still took five months. And I'm talking about payments that are not even 5% of of what they know to be the damage. I mean, that is, it, it should be criminal. Honestly, it really should be criminal. The, some of the devastation we saw over there, um, they should never have been able to get away with that. You know, um, yeah, I hope I hope it does waken everybody up that you need to be represented. Um, whether it be restoration company, homeowner, you know, restoration companies that we work with, they have some bills. We look out for their bills too. You know, I'm we're making sure that everybody gets taken care of throughout the process because we want to make sure that we all stay. You know, so um, the alignment of, of representation is key. Um, again, somebody that knows what they're talking about, knows policy um, and time. And again, doesn't mean that some newbie can't come in and, and really be a bookworm and study and, and a, you know, wants to scholar this, this business too. Absolutely. More the, the more the merrier. We need, we need troops to fight this, you know, vicious army of the insurance companies. Um, but, you know, do it the right way. Do it the right way. Use the contract that the policy is written for and utilize it in the best interest, not your financial, you know. Um, to say that we make money easy, never has it been easy. You know, it's, it's a lot of work. Yes. It's a lot of paper. It's a lot of reviews of estimates and things like that. Um, but it's because of that time that we spend on each file, you know, sometimes one file will take me all day long to, yeah. to run through. And the expertise to understand the dynamics of who it is that you're dealing with, how to present the paperwork exactly. properly and everything else, man. But I, you know, listen, man, I just wanted to go ahead and thank you so much for, yeah. uh, cause I know that you're super busy, uh, taking the time out of your day to hang out with us and kind of, you know, share your thoughts on what's happening with not only the public adjustment side, but also how that's affecting policy changes here in the state of Florida, how it's affecting us restoration contractors as well so thank you so much for hanging out with us today dominators may i'm going to leave all of carlos machines the claim machine uh contact information in the video description as well as in the show notes below if you are in the state of florida if you have a policy question uh or you just want to give them a ring and say hello the information will be uh in the video description as well as in the show notes make sure that you check them out i personally worked with him on several several claims here in the past every single time in my opinion and he's knocked it out of the park. So I would strongly suggest if you don't have someone on your roster as of yet, make sure that you check out Carlos. And as always, hustle, hack, dominate. I'll catch you guys on the next one. You've been listening to Restoration Domination, your number one resource for tips, tricks, and hacks to help your business grow. Subscribe to our channel and follow us for more Restoration Domination. And follow our host at Rico Garcia Jr. on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and LinkedIn. Till next time, this is Restoration Domination. Hustle, hustle, hack, hack, dominate, dominate.